Let's look at a second example. Here's the integral. Do you remember this one? It was the one that started on the parabola x squared and finished on the line y equals x for the inner variable, the y variable. And x ran from 0 to 1. Perhaps we'd better put 1 on the axis there. The two curves met at the point 1, 1. Let's shade this one with arrows like we did before. x runs from 0 to 1. So the arrows will move from left to right until we get to 1. For each x between 0 and 1, the arrows will point upwards starting on the curve y equals x squared and with their heads on the curve y equals x. It'll look like this. To reverse the order of integration, I need to do what I did before. Just turn the arrows on their sides pointing from left to right. I'll do that diagram now and I'll also prepare the integral expression underneath. OK, there's the new shading, and the integral is ready to put the limits on. We need to describe this method of shading. The arrows are moving upwards. That is, we start at y equals 0, and we stopped drawing arrows at y equals 1. Those will be the outer limits for the integral, 0 to 1. Let's put them on. Now, what about the x limits? We need to say x runs from something to something. The bottom of the arrows is on the line y equals x. Another way of saying that would be x equals y. Hence, the lower limit must be y for the inner integral. I've written all that information out here. Now we just have to address the top limit. The top of the arrows, that is the head of the arrows, is on the curve y equals x squared. We need to rewrite that as x equals something. Clearly the way to do that is to take square roots both sides. If y equals x squared, then x must be either plus or minus the square root of y. Let's write that. It looks like that should give us our top limit for the integral. But which sign is it, plus or minus? Well, we're entirely in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, both x and y are positive. That means we need the positive root for our upper limit. We can neglect the negative one. There it is. Let's now put that in for our top limit. OK, that's finished. Let's get rid of the red parentheses now, and we've got our integral expression with the order reversed. Time to move on to the next example. Actually, the next example, when we did the previous screencast, was exactly the integral that we're seeing at the bottom of this page now. Clearly, if we reverse the order on that integral, we're going to end up back where we started with the integral at the top of the page. So there's really no point in doing that example. We'll move on to the fourth one. 